All right, ladies and gentlemen, today you're going to learn about using the smart board to record a lesson and upload to Canvas. Uh, first of all, our objectives are how to record a lesson, upload to a student accessible location, using the recording tool without the smart board, learn shortcuts to save time when creating your lesson, and create and record a lesson with grade level content. Now some of you are probably wondering why is this important? Well, our middle school is actually piloting an e-learning day and with that e-learning day they're really emphasizing authentic lessons and by authentic they mean involving either the voice or actual video with the teacher in the lesson. So this will help you to make a more authentic lesson by putting your voice behind a video that you either made or put together. All right, first we're gonna look at how to record a lesson. We have to locate the recording device. So if you go over to this little tool and I click on it, it'll open up. If you do not see the recording device right here, then you'll have to go to the settings bar and drag that little recording device over. Now, I don't need two of them, but you might also want to drag over some of these other things. We've got uh, the freehand capture for taking pictures, area capture, and some of your other tools. Now, since I'm done with that, so I close that back up, and now I have my little recorder over here. Actually, I have two. When you pull that recorder open, you will see some different options. The first thing you want to do is go to the menu option. When you click this down arrow, it will give you options and if you click on options, it will allow you to change to a higher frequency or frames per second and you want to go to the most, uh, the highest resolution there. Uh, that's just going to make your video come across a little better. It's going to stop any little glitches that you may have whenever you're uploading your video as well. Um, so the quality is a lot better. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to check out the different ways that you can actually record. And if you click this down arrow that we see here, there will be a little screen that will allow you to determine if you want to record by desktop area or window. When you do desktop it's just recording your whole screen. If you do area which is what I have for this recording you can draw a rectangle around a particular area like just your smart board screen and record that. For demonstration purposes I'm allowing you to see the majority of my screen so you can see where I'm moving my mouse um, to different icons. And then there's also the window. Once you've selected your recording, um, if you're doing the desktop, this is a great opportunity for those people that like to use PowerPoint or something other than the actual smart board tools. You have to download the smart board software and make sure you have the proper licensing. After downloading that proper software, you can use the recording tool to record a PowerPoint lesson and voice over the recording whatever's on your desktop. If you're English language arts and you want to go on to a different website and kind of highlight or underline some uh, topic sentences, that might be another opportunity where you record your screen and then you can see things that are going on outside of uh, that particular window that you're in. Finally, the audio device. That's very important. Some microphones aren't as good and they have feedback or they don't pick up your voice, it goes in and out. So you want to find a good audio device. A lot of computers and laptops nowadays actually have built-in audio devices. Um, some of them are very good and some of them are poor. So you may have to look into getting yourself an audio device. We're going to minimize this and move on to our next page. The next thing is to upload to a student accessible location like the Google Drive. So once you have your video recorded, and for demonstration purposes again, I've pre-recorded a video. And I've logged on to my Google Drive. 
So I'm going to open up the Google Drive at this point. And I'm going to add a file into this particular drive by going through my files. And I find the video that I want to add. PD test 1. I upload it directly into my Google Drive. Now I can access the link to this particular video and share it with others. You right click it, go to shareable link, and from here I can even change some of the settings as far as sharing is concerned. I can share within my own school network or I can even make it public if I want to share from school to school. Um, sometimes coaches share different videos of athletes and that would be a reason that you might need to make it public. Then you save that, copy the link, and from there you can use that link uh, to allow others to view this. If we go back to our smart board lesson, uh, sharing the link and the link settings is what I just went through. So now we also have uploading to YouTube. So we're going to open up my YouTube page and talk about how to upload. If you click on the icon in the right hand corner that says upload and then you click where it says select files to upload. At this point it will allow you to add in the file that you wish to upload. Uh, I'm not actually going to add this to my YouTube account but if I clicked on it it would have some information like tags and description for me to fill out and then it would publish my video with a, a thumbnail picture attached to it. You can also change the settings to private or public. I like to leave mine public but if it's maybe not a professional video or you just don't want to make it public, uh, maybe you're using some files that weren't uh, created by you, then you would want to go private on that publishing setting. Next we have applying the link to Canvas. So if you have a Canvas account, you would log into your Canvas account and I really like to use the calendar. When I'm putting my video on to Canvas, you're going to click on that calendar and when you click on it, a little icon will open up like this. Again, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use a demo class. And here's my demo class. So I'm going to title, the, title this uh, PD Test 1. And I'm going to go to More Options. While in More Options, I'm going to again put in something so that we know what the video is of. PD Test 1. Highlight it and then insert the link. I just do control V to paste it, insert the link, and there you have it. Uh, you can also add files to this by coming over here and adding an actual file from your computer if you wanted, or um, a variety of different things. Whenever you're finished, hit create event, and it takes us back to the calendar and we can see, and anyone in this class would be able to see, when they click on this particular event, uh, the window will open up and you will see my link right there. Now, if it's a YouTube video, you can actually allow them to see uh, within the settings uh, what the video is of. So here's one for one of my classes. And we have the video of bar graphs. It pops up and a kid can access that by clicking on it right here and then opening it to a full screen mode. Another way you can do it in Canvas is to go to your class in Canvas and select modules. Once you've selected modules, you go down to the module that you wish to add your video to. And I'm just going to add it to this one for demonstration purposes. And we're going to change this to external URL. And I'm going to just paste in that URL address that I got uh, either from Google Drive or it can be the URL address from your YouTube video and then I'm going to title this again I'm going to call it PD test 1 add item 
And if I scroll down to the bottom, we can see it is added. It's not published yet. If you wish to publish it, simply click on the little publishing uh, cloud here. And now anyone in that class would be able to see it. I'm going to delete this from my account. And now back to our lesson. So those are some ways you can use the links. Some shortcuts that you can use. One is Control D to copy. Now most of you are probably used to highlighting some words. Hit Control C and then hit Control V. And that still works here as long as you're actually highlighting words. It'll make that. Uh, but if you want to make multiple copies of this um, or you're making something else, maybe I draw a little circle here and I come back and I'm going to color this circle some different colors. All right, and now I have a couple things, and I want to make a copy of it. I can just highlight, hit Control D, and boom, I have a copy. If I only want to copy one of them, highlight, Control D. That shortcut will save you a lot of time. Control D, and if you realize, whoops, I made a mistake, or I don't want that, or maybe you want to copy all of these, hit Control D. And now you have multiple, multiple of the same thing. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo and kind of move me back to where I was. So Control Z, and now we're back to square one. But that's how you copy. Uh, to group them, if you want two items put together, like a bulleted point and a word, and again, I can make this bulleted point a little bit smaller, put it right in front of the word, and I want to connect them, I'm going to hit Control G. And that's going to save you a lot of time, too. Uh, I use a lot of grouping whenever I want to apply a property to something, which is like a property of fade in. So now, whenever I click the item, it will fade in. I'm going to go ahead and control Z that and back it up. So we're back to square one again. Control R will ungroup. So if you have something grouped, control G, and you want to ungroup it, simply click on it hit control R and it will ungroup. If you had grouped a certain things and then grouped some more things to that particular item, you would hit control R a couple times to ungroup it all. Control V will paste just like I did with the word save. I copied and then I pasted. Control Z will help to undo something. And then if you ever want to write over the top of something, just so you're not like actually moving the word around um, you can actually control G, group it, and then lock it in place with control K. We'll lock it in place. So now I can't actually move it. It's locked. To unlock it, you can either click up here and go to unlock, or as you can see, hit control J. And those are some shortcuts that will really save you a lot of time whenever you're trying to make your own lesson. The next thing, creating your lesson if you don't have a Smart Exchange account, I recommend getting one. Okay, there are some pre-made lessons on the Smart Exchange that you can access uh, very quickly. And maybe you like some of the materials, maybe you like all the materials. Um, but it's a great way to see some different lessons that other people have made. Once you log into your Smart Exchange account, simply go over to the search engine and you can type in the lesson you're looking for. If you want to make it more specific, you can go to your particular subject or subjects, your grade level, whatever it may be, or even multiple grade levels, and then hit go. And a variety of different lessons will pop up. Um, and maybe you just want to use a page or two from each of these lessons. Or maybe you want to preview the lesson. You can do all of this in the Smart Exchange. The majority of lessons are free to download. Um, of course, you got to remember someone else has the rights to those videos. And then we can look at how to drag and drop pages from a lesson. So, again, for demonstration purposes, I pulled one of my own lessons. And here we have a page. And maybe I want to add this page to my current lesson that I'm doing. So I'm just going to grab this page and I'm going to drag it down, drag it into my other particular smart board lesson, and I'm going to drop that page right in there. And now you see that page has all of the same 
same properties added to it and all of this information right here in my new lesson. So we looked at the smart exchange, drag and drop, and now adding new pages. To add a new page, simply come up here where it says plus. If you do that, it will create a white page. I'm going to undo that though. And we're going to go back. The other way you can add a page is actually coming over here and you can hit clone page. Sometimes this will save you time if you're changing the background or you want to add different words in and you don't have to recreate everything. Um, it might just save you a little time to hit control D or clone page here. And that's how you add new pages. We're going to move on to the next. When you're creating a page from scratch, you want to catch the attention of your audience. And oftentimes, a white blank screen is not the way to catch their attention. So we change this screen up just a little bit by changing the background. Click off of the words and just onto the page. And when you go to this icon on your left hand toolbar, you'll come across different ways to change the colors of your background. I like using solid fill. You can do gradient fill as well. Um, there's a variety of different things and ways to change it. I'm going to stick with black for now. So that's how you change the color of your background. If you want to insert text, go up here where it says text, this little letter A, and you can click on one of the basic fonts that they already have. Or if you want to change the font yourself, you can be more specific and actually change that font to what you wish to put in. Of course, there's underlining, italics, bold, and you can even change the color of the font. And if you're really wanting to get uh, specific with some different colors, you can go into this different color setting and specify what types of colors you want other than the ones already listed. You can even add transparency to some of the uh, the words that you may type in. Next, inserting pictures and using the screenshot tools. Earlier you saw me add a couple tools like this one over here, area capture. And what that allows me to do is just to drag over a certain area and it'll take a screenshot of that particular area and put it right into the smart notebook file. It'll open it up in a new page all on its own as well. If I wanted to insert a picture, just come up to insert picture and you could either save something straight from uh, Google Images as long as again you're not validate or violating any rights or copyright. Um, or you could have a picture of your own that you open up from a file. So I could go into one of my pictures um, and open it up right here. Again, a I would make sure that you're not violating any kind of copyright issues. Adding properties to text or images. Uh, this is something real easy that can be done and you simply click on whatever it is that you're trying to add a property to like in the example here and you're going to click the little down arrow go to properties and here you can change the object animation set it for whatever you want. Right now it's set for fly in whenever I enter the page but if I wanted it to fade in when the object is clicked or when the page is entered I can change that up right here. I'm gonna go back to none. I don't want properties on this. And again remembering those shortcuts that's gonna help you to save a lot of time when you're creating your own lessons. A couple other neat features you have is connecting to other pages within your lesson. If you want to have a little icon in the corner that automatically connects back to maybe the beginning of your lesson or the objectives, uh, you can set that up real easily. Just put some kind of icon up in that corner. Again, I can change colors however I feel. And I'm just going to click the down arrow, go to link, and here it says page in this file. I click the first page if that's the one I want it to link to or even if it's a problem and you want to link um, an answer 
to a little icon on that page. I recommend going to object. That way it's linked to the object and not an icon in the corner because it's really small and it's sometimes hard to click in order to go to that link. So if you click on object, hit OK, and I click on that and boom, it takes me right back to my objectives page. All right. Another thing that you can do is actually link an illustration or words to an external site. So if I go back to my YouTube site and I come up with one of my videos and maybe I want to link one of these videos to my actual lesson. Within the smart board, I go down to link. I copied the URL address and I'm simply pasting it from YouTube into this lesson. Click on object, OK, and now as soon as I click on that, this YouTube video will pop up. So you won't be searching for it. Well, those are just some of the tools that you can use to record your own lessons and make it authentic. I hope this helped you out. See ya.